Welcome to Sit Down News. Today, I'm going to be speaking to you about a blog that I wrote called Lucchese Betrayals. These betrayals had started taking place in the 80s. And at that time, the Lucchese administration, the boss was Vic Amuso, Little Vic. And his on the boss was Anthony Gaspipe Castle. As people know, Gaspipe. And they developed a hatred towards um, Anthony Tumac. Anthony Tumac uh, Asatoro was a, a, a captain, or as we say, Cabaret for the Jersey crew. At that time, he was handing in or kicking up rather about $50,000 a year. Vic and Gas felt that was an insult. They felt that the Jersey crew should be kicking up half their earnings. And ultimately, they, there was a plot to kill the entire Jersey crew. Many of those members went on the run and went into hiding. Tumac, um, I believe, went to Florida. Someone else uh, said that he was in North Carolina. Nevertheless, he, he took off. At that time, he was uh, had a hit put out on him. He was labeled a rat. And they sent the hit team down to Florida to not only lay on Tumac, but his son, Anthony Jr. And his wife was also a target. When Tumac found out that they were targeting his wife, he now went to the government, started cooperating. And, but previous, pre, prior to this, while they were looking for Tumac of Florida, Tumac was in a Jersey jail for refusing to testify at a state at a state panel, and um, and meanwhile they were labeling the guy a rat, and he was here he was refusing to testify. And as a result of all of this, I think he was the highest ranking member out of New Jersey and for the Lucchese's at that time to cooperate with law enforcement. The next person I spoke about was a longtime uh, soldier of the Lucchese family, Bruno Facciolo. For you Brooklyn people, you know Bruno is a Canasi guy. Um, the Lucchese's had these two crooked cops that famously known, and they labeled Bruno a rat, brought it to the administration. The administration put a hit out on Bruno and um, ultimately, he was summoned to a uh, summons to a, a garage in Brooklyn, where he was stabbed and shot to death. And he, the hit team was instructed by the Lucchese administration to to put a canary in Bruno's mouth. Ultimately, it came out that Bruno was never a rat, so they, Bruno was killed for no reason. The next person that I spoke about was another Caprugine out of Brooklyn, Fat Pete Chioda. And in 91, Fat Pete was indicted on the, the famous Windows case, which a lot of the families were indicted on. And going on the advice of his lawyer, who told him that his case was, the government's case rather, was, was, a, was a rock solid case, he felt that uh, Chioda should take a plea. Chioda ultimately took a plea and that was looked upon by the Lucchese administration as that he was a possible rat. They put a rat wire on Fat Pete. They sent the hit team out um, and, and caught Pete on um, May 8th of 1991 at a Brooklyn gas station. I think he was fixing his car. Um, from, from what I read, there was over 200 shots fired at Pete, he was hit by like a dozen of them, and he was able to shoot back at, at the hit team as well. And after this, a message was sent, I believe, to his lawyer that if Chioda was to testify, they were going to kill his wife and kids. Naturally, his whole family was put in WITSEC. But on March 10th, 1992, a woman by the name of Patricia Capizzolo, who's fat Pete Chioda's sister, gets shot in the neck, I think the back and the shoulder. She winds up li living, she, she survives the hit, but it's one of the first times that they actually put a hit on a cooperating witness family. And um, 
law enforcement stated that prior to the shooting of Pete Chioda, he was not an informant for the FBI. Um, next, I spoke about someone called Alphonse Little Aldiaco, who was, for, who was a former acting boss for the Lucchese family. At this time, there was chaos in the family, and a lot of the members felt that Vic and Gas was the administration were acting paranoid and um, killing people in a paranoid way. And they replaced Little Al with a four-man panel. So the Lucchese's made a panel up and that was going to be their administration while Vic and Gas were both on, on the run from law enforcement. So on September 18, 1991, Al Diaco was summoned to a Manhattan hotel called the Kimberly Hotel. And some of the members of the panel were there. Mikey DeSantis was there, who is presently the uh, acting boss of the family. And Al Diaco said that he felt that they were all acting out of character. They spooked him. He felt it was like a setup for a hit. And he quickly made up an excuse and got himself out of there. And then he wind up going to the FBI. He also, before this, was labeled labeled a rat. Prior to this happening, there was no proof of Al Diaco ever being a rat. And there was a, another name that I forgot to mention. Actually, two things. Pete Chioda had an uncle that I think was shot and killed that they say was uh, under suspicious circumstances. And they probably hit him as well. There was a guy, a, a, a friend named Anthony DeLappy. Um, Anthony DeLappy, they, they labeled him a rat. He had suspicions that something was up. He took off and, and shot out to California. He ultimately was tracked down to Hollywood where he was shot in his, his I think his garage. So he was another guy. That was, that was shot as well. I concluded it by saying that this, this was learned behavior because it persisted and carried on to the recent administration who also labeled myself as, as and falsely accused me of being a rat. And, um, you know, I said, none of the above mentioned, and I mentioned a bunch of people, ever had paperwork produced on them as proof of, of them being a cooperator, a confidential informant, or what have you, or being no good, as they would say in the life. There was no paperwork. The only proof that they had was word of mouth. And word of mouth just doesn't cut the mustard. And, you know, unfortunately, a few of these guys, like Bruno and this Anthony DeLapi, and lost their lives and it, and they lost their lives for no reason because they were not rats or they were not informants and they were labeled as rats. And I don't, I think this gets lost on a lot of people, you know, qu people quickly label people as rats. And as I said previously on the NBA and Bart man, we had a show paperwork means everything to me. That doesn't mean that the paperwork's always true. You know, you, the, 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 you, you have to have paperwork, 302s is a lot involved. And, you know, to actually call someone 100% without a doubt, a, an informant, a rat, or whatever way you want to, whatever way you want to put it. But, you know, paperwork should be presented, not word of mouth. You know, word of mouth is, is something that we even in prison knew. You know, guys would say, oh, that guy's a rat. I'd say, well, let me ask you a question. Where's the paperwork? You know, you can't just call the guy a rat. Where's show us paperwork that this guy is no good, that it says in black and white, he cooperated or he did anything. Show us. And, and nine times out of 10, no one could come up with the paperwork. And, and that, this happens off, all, 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 often too many times. And it, it continues to go on. And it's just unfortunate. But that, that's, that's life. So anyway, that, that's the end of that. And... Um, as I always say, if you want to subscribe, you could do down below to this to this uh, channel. I hope everyone's going to be enjoying their weekend. I'm going to be enjoying mine. I'm going to do my fatherly duties and uh, ciao.